up. I have a feeling you're going to sleep up on this couch, aren't you? Is that what you're planning? Through all that food if you want to, you tell me, girl. Two-thirds for me, one-third for you, okay? I'll go put that in your bowl in a second. when I'm done, but I'm having mine. You're being very patient, that's a good girl. You want this? 
So you're sleeping tonight up in the bed? Ready for dinner, are you? <laughs> Now too. Would you like some? Okay, not at the table though. Go to your dish, please. Come on, go to your dish. Stay. That's a lot. Give you too much. You have got almost as much as me. Do you deserve that? Do you deserve all this? All right, give me five. Give me five. Good girl. Okay, go ahead, Kevin. Go ahead. Yeah, it's true. It's all yours. So nice. Good girl. Is that good? You're welcome. Hi, right, girl. Stay out of the way, though, okay? Awesome. Okay, it's my turn to eat.
other guy. Give it a second to cool down, okay? Give me five. Good girl, okay. Careful though, it's hot. Alright, let you go. Leave it. Burn it in, leave it. Thank you. We're we gonna go, we're we going for a walk. You want your backpack on? chose to go out and sleep outside by herself on the front porch and watch for squirrels when see if I can get her to come in. Do you want to sleep inside instead? You gonna stay out in the rain. Stay in there or are you coming in? Okay. Okay, good girl. Smell. Good girl. Double check, eh? Good girl. Yeah, you're right. All right, one more. Okay, give me five. Give me five. Okay. That's got a half hurt.
nice warm bed in here. the beginning of this cabin builder had a lot of funny questions people being sarcastic but asking how many slivers I got or injuries that I get during this cabin build and there was one incident when I was lifting the ridge beams up onto the roof into position I was climbing up this ladder actually with the heavy heavy 6x6 hemlock beam and it just shifted on me and it came down on my thigh and gave me a bruise, but I kept working. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, enough to, to uh, stop me, so it wasn't that bad. But that was literally the only uh, minor injury I've had in the last nine months working on this cabin. No slivers, no uh, black nails from hitting with a hammer, no roof falls, no ladder falls. And I think the reason for that is that, a couple of reasons, I think one of them is that it's not a job, so I'm able to uh, take my time. It's one thing about trying to be in the workforce and make money is that you need to do things quickly. That's certainly not the case here. I think the other thing is that I'm just in the moment when I'm working here. Uh, and listen to the lack of noise, listen to the silence outside. and. The fresh air, I think maybe makes a difference too. I'm just able to really, really focus on what I'm doing. No distractions, even when I'm deep in thought, which I am a lot when I'm working like I am right now. It still doesn't dis distract me from the work itself. I'm able to pay attention. Now I do have a cell phone here with me and I have a first aid kit. And to answer the other questions about safety, I do have a carbon monoxide uh, alarm and also a fire extinguisher, so. I'll have to add screws later once I get to a hardware store.
Yeah, that's going to be a favorite spot. I have a feeling. While I'm out here clearing the snow off and getting, collecting uh, more materials to finish that bench and put some shelves and stuff in, I might as well answer a couple of your questions since so many new people came to the channel as a result of that viral video last week. So I noticed on some of the bigger social media pages like uh, Lad Bible and NBC, uh, Good Morning America, things like that, do I live here full time? Answer is no, not yet. I don't have the place ready, first of all, for my wife and I, and because I am married, my kids are still with us, but they're just about to move out and move on with their lives. So, just just going to be my wife and I and my dog, our dog. Uh, so, once the cabin wilderness homestead is ready, she and I can move up here, at least for a year and see what it's like. There's just too many things I need to add to make this place comfortable for a couple rather than just for myself, uh, including a bathhouse in addition to this outhouse, somewhere to clean year-round, uh, just like laundry facilities, somewhere to do uh, clo wash clothing, uh, the outdoor kitchen, so we don't have to cook in there all the time, and we can bake uh, bread and stuff out here in the oven. A workshop, I can't keep working inside, doing construction inside the building. Need a woodshed, and I need to keep cutting wood and have that in at least a year or two ahead uh, before moving in here full time and needing to heat it full time. Um, sauna, like I said, or bathhouse. Storage for food is probably my biggest challenge. You know, if I lived alone, if I was single, 100%, I'd be here right now. This is more than comfortable enough for me. So if you want to stay tuned uh, near the end of almost all of my videos, I have a section I call My Self Reflections, where I talk about uh, my feelings for the week and 
some habits and things that I use to uh, live my life and just observations on people and events and stuff like that so if you want to stick around to that part I'll talk about in this episode hypocrisy and how I'm a hypocrite but just about everybody's a hypocrite and we need to just decide at what level we want to be and uh, Callie don't knock that tripod over but yeah just in this day and age it's hard to be one of any one thing so even though I'm building this wilderness off-grid homestead there's things that I have to compromise on which leads me to another question and that's the roof boards and the floorboards no I did not mill those myself I don't have a mill and I don't have power equipment or generator up here to do that I have a cha Alaskan chainsaw mill that I've never used before maybe that's my compromise I start doing that that's the one power equipment or power process that I use to build the rest of the things up here at the cabin so I did get these things milled locally though extremely cheaply the roughs on lumber not from a lumber store um, but it fit into my model into my plan my plan was to build this thing as cheaply as possible I wanted to see if I could build a place free essentially and almost live for free that's not quite possible I'm doing my best to accomplish that but there's compromises at every turn lighting for example now uh, that's one of the other main questions I get is at the end of that short time-lapse video and in the longer video I show me up in the loft with lights in behind me of course that's my wife's touch not mine <laughs> those little uh, uh, twinkling lights in the in the loft in the bedroom uh, but actually they're functional so I'll turn those on at night uh, before going to bed and that's enough light to get uh, ready for bed by those are powered by little just double A batteries that I recharge using this goal zero solar charger I because again this is a mix of modern and and old traditional whatever you want to deem traditional if you can call anything traditional and when you call something traditional what period are you referring back to but uh, you know I have to run these batteries run the camera run the lighting for the camera and I need some kind of lighting even if it wasn't for camera which would mean either bringing it fuel or finding a place that I can collect enough beeswax I guess to make my own candles which is not really practical I've never found anything like that in fact honeybees aren't even native to to Canada and uh, that would not have been a traditional method of use of lighting anyway I digress but ba basically the point is that everything's a compromise I need power here so it means I'm probably gonna have to install a solar system which answers another question that a lot of people have what am I going to do for power uh, right now I have to go back and charge my batteries back in my truck at the road so I've got a hike out of here right now plug my batteries in keep the truck on I need to bring materials up from the road anyway so that's going to take some time and while that's happening the batteries are charging but that's just not practical I need to get a charging station close to the cabin that I can uh, you know charge a couple of deep cycle uh, batteries full size a car battery size and I can charge everything off of that and then we've got to address the things like Wi-Fi right now it's just cellular uh, surprisingly I have cellular service here right here at the higher part of the property if I go down even to the back of the cabin sometimes or down into the valley certainly or on most of the property I have no cell service um, so it's expensive of course to just keep doing cellular so I need a satellite Wi-Fi system here eventually again completely against the green of completely being off grid but that's the compromise and I'm just going I am going to continue doing this I'm going to continue sharing all my experiences up here uh, with you guys so I need to have that uh, Wi-Fi to be able to do that right now most of the time I have to run into town even though I'm not up here full-time like I said my internet's not much better at my house so I need to run into town to uh, a library or a Starbucks or something like that which again is just so opposite of what I'm doing here it feels odd to sit there in Starbucks watching uh, listening to the sounds uh, while I upload a video of this tranquility here but those again that's the compromises that's the hypocrisy of the age that we live in and what I'm doing here so am I 100% off-grid you know doing something that hasn't been done in 50 years or 100 years no I would love to do that but the practicality is I'm probably not going to because I'm going to have to have some modern conveniences 
I will have to continue to bring in batteries or you know even kerosene or lamp oil I'm trying to reduce my inputs as much as possible because that dedicated very serious about reducing my living expenses to as close to zero as possible and that was my dream 26 seven years ago and when I was a teenager I'm getting back to that now and I want to try to fulfill that um, now that I'm almost 48 I want to be able to get to that point in my life where I could be totally self-reliant or as close to self-reliant as is possible in this day and age yeah, and in the past it wasn't really possible either typically communities helped each other there's always barter there's always uh, importing and trading I mean right down to the spices that I use for my cooking that can't grow those locally so they're traded in and they would have been for the last thousand years or more it's, um, we're in a global uh, with globalization things are easier to get and they're cheaper but uh, my goal is to reduce my footprint ecologically as well live a more sustainable lifestyle which means trying to limit the inputs or the imports I guess from you know far off and that includes things like soybeans that are just not grown and corn for that matter not grown uh, organically or sustainably and uh, we have to import a lot of that stuff here so I'm trying to reduce that as much as possible while also having a clean healthy diet so a lot of compromises and a lot of contradictions and a lot of hypocrisy that's uh, that's the way it is that's the channel that's who I am so what I'm setting out to do here is just reduce that hypocrisy as much as possible. So if you are new to the videos, this is typically the way they're structured that I'll build or, or do uh, you know fishing or something um, uh, productive at the beginning of the video. Most of the time it's silent because I'm not a big talker. I'd rather just go do my stuff in the outdoors and, and enjoy the peace and quiet and the solitude, the serenity. Um, and then at the end of the videos I tend to talk and ramble on because I've been so quiet for so long So this is what I'm doing right now So thanks everybody for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you up at the cabin next week. Take care and have a great week